Hello friends and welcome back. It's Cook Recipes Like a Pro. And today I wanted to talk to you about phyllo dough. I know that a lot of people are hesitate whether they should try to use phyllo dough. And I get so many complaints about how it became crumbs and um, it dried out immediately and it didn't work and I baked it and it got burned and or I opened the package and the package was a disaster it was all crumbs there's a lot of risk when you work with phyllo dough but on the other hand the more you know how to work with it the more convenience it becomes to work with there are some basic things that you need to know about phyllo dough, but once you learn the basic things, how to maintain it during the making, and how to play with cover with a towel and uncover the towel and cover again and uncover, it can be a fun thing to do. So I thought to myself, you know, it's been a while since I had phyllo dough because I haven't been going shopping with all the isolation and quarantine and all that. I finally went shopping and I got a phyllo dough. So I would like to introduce to you three different episodes of things that you can do with phyllo dough. Today, we're going to start with a phyllo dough borecas. Now, if you go back with my videos to maybe February this year, I uploaded a video about burekas and I will put the link below this video for you so that you can see it. That burekas appetizer was delicious. It has potatoes and onions and it was an individual burekas to serve as an appetizer, to serve as a first course, to serve as a vegetarian uh, dish. This time, I would like to show you how I make a burekas roulade. So it's more of a roulade, and the inside is filled with brown onion and potatoes. It's a delicious dish. It's vegetarian. It can actually be vegan as well if you don't brush the top of the roulade with an egg but we're gonna brush it with egg. It gives it a nice color. So this is our phyllo dough. So my very first suggestion for you is when you buy phyllo dough, do not buy one package. Because as I said in the beginning, you never know how the inside is. This might be a very old package. It's really hard to tell on the package if it's um, new or old. And if it's a very old package and they didn't tell you how old it is, then the inside will crumble right there as soon as you open it. But, so that's why when I have all the ingredients and I'm ready to open it, I make sure I have another one just in case if the first one is crumbling like breadcrumbs, I then have an extra one to use it right away. Let's go over the ingredients. I have onions and I have potatoes. I have one egg and I have salt, black pepper and turmeric. That's all you need and of course the phyllo dough. When it comes to the onion, have more onions than potatoes. This bureka roulette loves the flavor of onion that was brown and has been caramelized and the flavor marinates nice with the turmeric, salt and pepper. It's a very simple dish and it's a delicious, delightful vegetarian dish. So I'm gonna start by peeling off the potatoes. I'll cube them and I'll put them on the stove. We need them soft. And then we're gonna take care of our onions. We have to really brown them nice. Be careful not to burn them, but caramelize them nice. Okay, potatoes are ready to go on the stove. Our onions are ready 
and we are going to brown them nicely. I'm adding some vegetable oil. Now it's important that the onions are cooked and browned, but not too much brown. They start getting burning spots on them. Another very important thing is that while you are doing all the preparations, while you're cooking the potatoes, and caramelizing the onions, and getting ready for the roulette, the filo dough itself has to stay in your refrigerator. It's important that you take it out only the minute you have to actually open it and work with it. So please remember that. So while the onions are being cooked, I'm gonna get ready with the potatoes because the potatoes are all ready. I've got this tool for mashing potatoes. You can use just a regular masher and mash them. But I like this because it really meshes them so nice and they come out from these sides just like little skinny noodles. The, the one thing to know when you're working with this tool, um, it's important that the potatoes are very soft. If they are just half cooked, it's not going to work that well with this one. So when you are cooking the potatoes really nice, 100% We have here our mixture of onions and potatoes and I already put the spices, turmeric, black pepper and salt, it's all you need. And a very important factor about the mixture is that the onion is very dominant in this one, but remember the onion sweetened because we caramelized it, we cooked it, the acidity is not there anymore. So really what you have here is a nice sweetened caramelized onion mixed with the potato puree and the spices. We're gonna set this aside. Make sure to prepare a nice clean towel. You need a clean towel because now that we took out our filo dough from the refrigerator, we might need to cover it right away. And how do we know if it needs to be covered right away? Let's open it and see. The thing about the filo dough is once you open a packet, and I've tried it too many times, you have to use up the whole thing. And that's why we are doing a series of three videos with three different delicious filo dishes. So, taking out the package, and now we have to hope that the package is okay. Otherwise, I have to go and open my extra one. And trust me when I tell you that, yeah, it happened to me before. It even happened to me in my previous restaurant in the middle of a workshop when I was teaching how to work with filo dough. 
and the filo dough package that I opened was not great and I had to go immediately and open another one. So if you are keeping it in the freezer like me, make sure to take it out the night before. I think it's our lucky day. This packet is good. It's not too dry. I don't see it crumbling. Hopefully our Gorekas is going to turn out great. Okay, so the one thing I do now, I have, again, keep a clean towel right next to you. I've got my oil brush and I have a little bowl filled with oil and I've got little oil filled with vegetable oil. Now, you can do it with melted butter. And in the restaurant, sometimes I did it with melted butter. The results are the same anyway, so it's okay. You're perfectly fine to use regular oil. Do not use olive oil. Olive oil, remember, has a very low burning temperature and it's not gonna be the same. You can use canola oil, you can use vegetable oil. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I am taking one sheet. Look how, look how lucky we are today. This is very nice to get this kind of filo dough sheets. And immediately I'm going to brush it with the oil. Now it's very important. I'm gonna give you some very important tips. When you're working with filo dough, if you see that, it, that it's almost starting to dry, do not hesitate. Immediately open the clean towel that you have by your side and cover the filo dough. Cover it immediately. If you think it's way too dry to the point that you know the minute you will take out the first uh, sheet, it's going to crumble in your hands, sprinkle a little bit water on your clean towel and cover your filo dough. This will help moisten the filo dough and it might just be okay here, see, this is unbelievable. I love it when the filo dough is this perfect. Oh, it makes me happy. I'm putting it right on the first one and immediately dip the brush in oil and brush your filo dough. And you have to brush each sheet of filo dough because when it, it's the oil that's going to make them crispy, and make them separated. Otherwise, your roulade or your baking dish will be almost doughy. So it's very important. And as you can see, here is my third one. I'm gonna lay it on the other two and I have a feeling that I should cover the filo dough because I think it's a little dry and I don't want it to get dry and it will get dry immediately. So don't take the chances. Immediately cover it with your towel. So I covered my filo dough and I am applying a very thin layer of oil. The, the oil, you should apply a thin layer of oil, but make sure that the whole
on my baking pan beautiful gently gently take them out the roll is ready and here's a good tip for you we know that we're going to brush it with egg mixture on top but still you have to first brush it with the oil to make sure that it doesn't dry so i've got my egg and i am using a different brush don't use the same brush with that you used for the oil and just a little mix and now we are ready to brush brush the whole thing on top and then brush the sides when it bakes it's gonna look kind of a honey color shiny and beautiful i've got my sesame and i'm gonna sprinkle a little bit sesame on top how beautiful is this amazing i love it i love it and you know this is a nice appetizer dish that you can make ahead of time a week in advance put it in your freezer and when you're ready to serve it just warm it in the oven and serve it fresh ready to go or you can even freeze it just like this before you bake it and then take it out and put it in the oven and bake it and it will have be freshly baked ready to go and serve it what a great idea now today i filled it up with potatoes but actually there's several other classic ways to fill up a borekas you can fill it up with mushrooms you can fill it up with spinach and cheese a lot of times i would fill it up with spinach and feta you can fill it up with meat and then it becomes more of a, you know maybe if you serve a small portion as a first course or it can be a main dish if you're serving a nice large piece of that so that's it our oven is ready for 400 degrees it's gonna go in the oven anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes and then we'll be back and show you the beautiful borekas appetizer 